going on guys? I'm back and today I'm going to be doing a new review. Um, in this video we're going to be taking a very nice, good, and detailed look at the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class um, 14 Ironhide from the first Transformers movie. Now, diving into details about this figure, I love it. It's a really, really good figure. Um, basically, um, I have to say that like, there could have been improvements, which I'll talk about once we get to the review, but there could have been improvements. However, I'm just saying though, like, the figure's, like, the figure was good. I must admit, I really do like how the figure is. Anyways, um, if you do like, if you like this video, please leave a like and a comment down below what you guys want me to do next. Um, I might start doing toy hunts, so if you want to see that, comment down below. Um... And if you really do like this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the turn on the post notification so you never miss me making a new video. But anyways, guys, let's get into the review. Okay, everyone, here we have the Transformers Studio Series Boy to Class Ironhide. Um, I thought about it the other day for my last for my last review, which is the Transformers Bumblebee Studio Series, and I figured why not review this figure? Cause this seemed this seemed like would be pretty nice to review, so let's go ahead and get into it. For starters, as always, we'll take, we'll move the figure off to the side and talk about the packaging. So, we've got a nice model of Ironhide, which I believe this is from the game, the first movie game. I think that's from where that shot's from. But anyways, um, all about Ironhide, all about Logo, Studio Series, Transformers, Transformers, Generation. In the side box, we have Studio Series again, 14, and Ironhide. On this side of the box, we have a nice looking shot of that. On the top of the box, it just says Transformers. On the bottom, words, things, and barcodes. The back of the box. The back of the box, as always, just explains everything. You have the robot mode, which is very, very nice detailed. You have the truck mode. I might get the upgrade kit, not too sure. 27 steps. There's one of the figures I'll be reviewing. I don't have those two. I might get Starscream and review him. As you can see here, he is with the background. More on that later. And then there's the there's the bio if you want to read it. I'll give you some time. Okay, that should be enough. And before we talk about the figure, as always with the Studio Series, there's one more thing we need to talk about, and that is known as the backdrop. So, get the box out of here. And here we have the backdrop, and it's a little bit bigger than B's, so this, I might just have to leave it like that. But, uh, yeah, this is Mission City, the battle of Mission City, which is the final battle of Transformers. And, as always, you can get him into some very nice poses, must admit. You can definitely get this guy into a lot of good poses. Personally, this would be one of my favorite poses for Ironhide. But, speaking of the figure... Let's go ahead and begin our talk. So, we can go ahead and get that out of the way. We'll talk more about that when the, we'll talk, we'll bring that back when he's in vehicle mode. But yeah, here we have the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Ironhide. How does he, how do, what, what do I think of him? I think this is a very, very nice figure. In my opinion, this is definitely the best Ironhide that we've gotten in a few years. Same thing with the Bumblebee. But of course, this is my opinion. If you don't like this figure, that's completely fine. But if you do like this figure, then... I don't know, then just leave a like. But uh, let's talk about his posability. You've got a swivel at the head. You can look... You can't really look up, and you can't really look down. You do have a slight rotation of the arm. The arm can move out. Oh, actually, let's just leave those on. You have a bicep swivel. You have a bend at the elbow. Wrist swivel. And the cannons are removable. We'll talk about more. We'll talk about those later on, but you do you do get these bits, which I always just prefer to fold them in. It makes it look a little bit more accurate. Uh, you don't have a waist swivel, but he can kick. The leg can move very far back, which is very impressive. You have a beautiful spread thigh swivel, bend at the knee, up and down at the up. Just up at the toe, and then the wheel can pop out, which I would just like. I just like to call this like, I don't know, like kind of like a bad transformation, if you want to call it that. And before we move on to size comparisons, let's talk about the guns. He comes with two accessories, which are 
which are his guns from the movies. And, but, uh, yeah, pretty much, you can just slide those into there. And then with these, you can definitely get a lot of poses. Personally, one of my favorites is just, actually, how you get him into some of the really nice poses that other YouTubers can. You just gotta bring the, but you gotta bring it out and bend the knee. You can't really do anything with, without a pivot for that one. And then you just fold, and then you bring out the arms. And now it looks like that he's shooting. Which, I might display him with Brawl or Blackout if I can get them. At the moment, I'm really just focused on getting the Shockwave. Getting this Transformers Studio Series Shockwave and Jetfire for Leader Class. For Voyager Class, definitely Scrapper or um, Mixmaster for the Decepticons. And then for the Autobots, I think... Um... I don't know, I guess like Sentinel Prime, but he's technically not really an Autobot at all. Now, let's talk about size. So, here we have my favorite Optimus Prime figure, which is the Transformers Dark of the Moon. Actually, it's my second favorite to the B-movie, which I don't have it, but I've seen it. As you can see, they scale into a pretty good. They scale pretty nice. Um, here he is with the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Megatron, which will be my next review. Stay tuned. I'm leaving the best for last, which is Optimus. And as you can see, like I said in my last review, Megatron is so large, I gotta raise the camera a little bit. Just a smidge. So there you go. And you've already seen him with Bumblebee, so we don't really need to do him. So, let's get into the transformation. For starters, you want to take the guns off. Next up, you want to come to the back, untab these parts, and bring them all the way out. Take this piece and bring it down. You don't have to bring it down like that. You can always just flip it all the way down, just get it out of the way. Next up, you want to take this piece and bring it out so you can bring the head up and out of the way. Got to bring it all the way up. Then you want to come, you want to bring the arms back so that we can fold those in. And then you want to place one finger here and one finger on that little thing. You want to just pull it up. So that it gets it out of the way. Okay. And then you just want to push this down. You should hear a tab in. And then you want to take it, you want to take this piece, bring it up. And then we'll focus on this part right now. So you want to bring these all the way out. You want to bring these pieces in. You want to tab them in. It's a little tricky. Like so. And then you just want to bring this up and then it should tab in. And now you have, now you basically have the front. And then the last thing we'll do for now is just fold up the head and push this together so we get the wheels perfect. Now, onto the legs. For the legs, you're going to untab these pieces, which are going to be the back of the truck. Spoilers. You want to bring, you actually need to bring that piece down. And you don't want to bring it all the way down or else you won't be able to get the foot out of the way. And then there's a little slot right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. And then it'll go into this tab. Like so. Flip out the wheel. And you want to do the same stuff on the other side. And unlike the Bumblebee, this figure, all of his joints feel... Well, they don't feel like tight, but they also don't feel loose. They're like in the middle. But then you just want to tab them together. And then you want to make sure everything's out of the way, like so. And then you want to flip the arms up and rotate them. And then you want to bring them right here. You want to, you basically want to make sure that these tap, these parts right here can tap into those little slots. That's one of my problems, is that one of my problems with this figure is that it's not exactly the best connection. Like, they'll stay in there, sometimes. It's just when you got everything tabbed in. Okay, like so, and then those should stay tabbed in. You just want to bring... You just want to make sure that the arm, that the hands are fully like that. Just tab them in. There's a tab right here that'll go into that slot. It's not exactly that. It's not exactly a walk in the park. Okay. Okay. 
and then you just want to tap it in, which there is, if we fold that up, there's a tab, or a tab and a slot, just push that in, however, you want to make sure that these arm pieces are fully up before you do that. Like so, and there you go. Let me just go ahead and move the camera a little back. Sorry, it's a little wobbly. Uh, I don't really have the best thing. I'll show you that in a future video, what I'm using. But now we can take the guns. There's a tab and a slot where you just tab them in. And then on the back, there's these tabs, which you only need one for this tab, like so. I don't really like that. I just prefer to leave the guns off to the side. I'm gonna be honest, this has to be my favorite iron hide. This is definitely my favorite iron hide out of all. Like, even the bottom, like, other than the fact you've got these pieces right here, but like, at the same time, you can pretty much, like, think of that as like a step. But like, even the bottom of the figure doesn't look that bad. Except for that. That is just stupid. Stupid designing. Unacceptable. But. You got these very nice smokestacks, I believe that's what they're called, I'm not into many, I'm not really into that. But, yeah, uh, my only complaint with the vehicle mode is that this piece, it just, it ruins the rollout mode, to be honest. It completely ruins the rollout mode. However, the upgrade kit fixes that, along with giving us some of the Dark of the Moon weapons. It's like 27 bucks, I don't really think I'm gonna do it. But anyways, um... Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe, leave a like, and comment down below which two figures you want me to review. Actually, you don't really need to comment which ones. Um, comment down, comment what you want me to do um, once I'm done reviewing these figures. And if it gets Shockwave or any kind of Transformers figure, I will review it. But anyways, guys. Oh, before anything else, I just remember. Before anything else, we need to take that stand... We always end it off by putting Ironhide right there. The wheel isn't really, it's just sticking off, but I don't know, you can think of it like an off-road thing. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below, and see you later.